Hi everyone. Today we're going to work on Unit 3 Data 11. We're going to use that to explore the Sourcing and Evaluating Reliability tool. Now what is the Sourcing and Evaluating Reliability tool? Here it is. It has Step 1, Step 2 together, then Step 3 as one reads the source. Step 4 is a reread for deeper analysis, and Step 5 is you establish the reliability. How useful is the information found in the source? For this purpose, how reliable is the source? You get to rate it from unreliable to somewhat reliable to completely reliable. You get to give your rating, and obviously, step six, they're gonna, this is social studies, that's why I said obviously, they're going to ask you why. What is the reason for your evaluation of reliability? Blank is somewhat reli reliable, somewhat reliable, and unreliable because that's what you're going to have to do. In this lesson, okay, they're going to be asking you to use the sourcing and evaluating reliability tool. Remember, guys, it doesn't have to be with this lesson. We're just using this lesson as a model to analyze various documents or sources to understand the factors or the reasons that led to the rise of totalitarianism. I know that's quite a mouthful. Totalitarianism in the Soviet Union. Totalitarianism is total government control. Okay, we're going up to Stalin. Is that why this happened? So now um, there's a model using the sourcing and evaluating reliability tool that's given in the next few slides, and we're going to have to break the model down for Lenin's new economic policy. The new economic policy, or NEP, as I'm going to be referring to it from now on, it was an economic policy, meaning for the money in the Soviet Union that represented, meaning how old money happened, not just money, but how all money, trade, everything else, more capitalism oriented, meaning more private ownership, economic philosophy, meaning that it, should, it which is kind of different than what the original Bolshevik revolution wanted, but Lenin believed it was needed to help the Soviets failing economy. When the Soviet Union had started, the economy was pretty bad. After analyzing the document, going to then determine if Lenin's NEP provides reliable evidence to explain what led to the rise of totalitarianism, which actually came really after Lenin in the Soviet Union. Remember, this is the beginning of the source, title, context, and source. So we have to read the title and context to make connections to prior knowledge. This will give, provide clues. We love clues, clues, clues that will help be helpful when completing subsequent or following. You see that word subsequent over there? F steps in the tool. So we're going to look now quickly at the next slide to give us the title and source and format. Okay? So the next slide, oh my goodness, there's a lot of text on here. So the first thing that I did for you, and you may want to actually pause your video here, I um, pushed it between two slides instead of one big slide with a lot of bumbled text because when it comes to me, I, I need things spread out. But it says I'm looking for title. It says the new economic policy by Vladimir Lenin. And so I'm putting in a text box here. Okay, new economic policy. E. Lenin. Okay, I'm going to pull the text box down so I can keep typing, right? It's not letting me because it's insisting on auto fitting. Do not auto fit. Yeah, I know that can happen in Google Slides sometimes, by the way. Okay, so what's our format? It is, what did we say this is? Let's go back and look. Okay, it says it's his economic policy. It could, okay, format is a leader's speech presenting policy. Now, historical context, what was going on before? Well, we mentioned the Bolshevik Revolution. Okay, and we have communism, communist takeover of Russia, forming the Soviet Union. Okay, and we know that there were economic struggles when the Soviet Union. Notice it wants to say collapse my computer. No, start it. While you read the document, this is step three, you're going to continue making inferences, ask questions, and make connections in the margins as annotations. Okay? And they're going to want you to put in the main idea, 
And then do you notice ideas or facts that support your observations from step one and two? What are the connections? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the beginning of it. Okay, not going to read it aloud. Normally I annotate. I'm actually not going to do that because I want to see what you come up with. Okay, you're going to read through it. You're going to look at it. You're going to think about it. Um, my hint that I'm giving you is he says that's the ABC of economics taught by the rudiments. If you see a word like that, you look at the side, the basics of science in Russia taught the profiteer, the person who makes money. We need to make money to get things to happen. Okay, so you can pause the video, take a look. Okay, now did you come up with the same thing I did? Let's see. Um, I read it. And Lenin's basic is that peasants, which make up the Russian economy, are used to capitalism, socialist, um, to be able, you want the new, let's write in the word socialist economy. I kind of see this as a band-aid to get it to start working, that we need it, right? Now, do I notice facts or ideas that support my observations from step one and two? What are the connections? So let's think about this for a minute. Um, well, he's backing, we need connections. We need connections, right? So he talks about, um, the, he has to deal with the problem and that means taxes and going back to capitalism. And he's saying he has to give in to capitalism. So we have to do taxes a little bit. And he says, who's going to take advantage? Who, who are the peasants going to follow? So um, we better do something. Lenin's saying we better do something. If not, we're going to lose the peasants. So what are the connections? Need to do something to, need to do something for government. I'm thinking out loud. Sorry, it sounds a little choppy. To make money and the peasants to do what they are used to. So communism, which is a form of which is a form of socialism, can be saved at the NEP. So he's kind of like saying it's kind of there, kind of not. Um, that's the connection that I'm making. You need some form of capitalism for the new economy to, well, I don't want to use the exact language. It doesn't ask you to quote, but capitalism must grow out of the soil, a free trade. Okay. So they have to have it, it says grow out of the soil. Okay. This is what they're used to. They have to give in. Okay. They need some form of capitalism for the new economy to be able to start working. Meaning he doesn't want it to, to admit that they're wrong, but he says we need a little bit of capitalism. So in this video, we specifically focused on the sourcing of reliability tool, and we worked on parts one and two, excuse me, let me add that in, and three of the tool itself, right? Next video, we're going to work on understanding part four of the sourcing reliability tool. It comes with an explanation of perspective, purpose, bias, and audience, what they are, how we work with them. And we're going to model a little bit for parts five and six. Okay. Last part of the video, we're going to work on sentence starters to help you with the sourcing and reliability tool part four. And if you want a sneak peek, here it is. We're going to work with perspective, purpose, bias, and audience. But you can't let that intimidate you. Of course not, because you're prepared. You're watching this video, right? That means you're on the right track. Have an awesome day.